ideas you would like to explore, either regarding the question or maybe this idea that uh, Chris is presenting as a starving artist? Yes, I, I, I guess I would make a distinction. Well, let's say it's a kind of duality. There are the artists who are less successful, who are focused on their work and trying to develop some sort of personal transcendence through their work or some sensory exploration through their work. And then there are the artists who are in it from a more business oriented angle. And, you know, if I take one example, Jeff Kuhn, the contemporary sculptor, uh, he worked on Wall Street before he became successful as an artist. So he learned the business model of Wall Street on how to be successful and how to sell and how to present yourself. And I would also probably say his father, I believe, was a businessman. He had the businessman genome. You know, and so other businessmen respond to his work and to him as a person because of all these qualities. The other kind of artist is the one who does it for themselves. Now that reminds me of a statement that the painter Yvonne Jaquette said to her class back in the 1970s when I was... Uh, brought in as a guest artist at Parsons School of Design in a class she was teaching. And she said to the students, well, who is the work for? And that question has haunted me ever since. In fact, I ran into her. I hadn't seen her in years. I ran into her two years ago. And I reminded her of what she said. She didn't remember it all. Of course, there was nothing she just threw off to the students. But... Uh, meanwhile, it's been haunting me. Who is it for? You know, is it for somebody to buy? Or is it for yourself? Both things, I think, are a little bit off-kilter. Um, if it's for yourself, well, then why should anybody be interested in it? Another friend of mine went to a psychiatrist and said, oh, somebody doesn't like me, you know. And the psychiatrist said to him, what's there to like? <laughs> <laughs> and one could say the same thing of the artist. Oh, they want somebody to like their work or to exhibit their work. Well, why should they? What's there to like? It's all about you. It's not about them. So should the art be oriented in a business sense to a marketplace, or should it be oriented to the self? I pondered it, like I said, for a decade. You know, uh, there's something to be said in both camps. It shouldn't be hermetic and just be about you. It should be communicative. It should be something that other people can learn from. Uh, and in that way, I think art relates to some sort of moral philosophy and uh, life philosophy in general. That when you look at the art, you see it in terms of a person's view of the world and what they see as their ideal view of living on this in this life, in this brief life we have. So, um, now whether you can see that through the work, you know, whether you can vi internally visualize that through the work, I mean, how daring are you willing to be in life? How afraid are you to explore unknown territory? Um, how socially conscious do you want to be? How personally you want to do. Uh, all these things, I think, are what the arts are really addressing. Um, you know, I always say, well, if I wrote down, you know, are you trying to achieve transcendence through the painting, or are you trying to create wallpaper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
lot of wallpaper <laughs> more than you can imagine well why don't we open it up to the audience it's oh, is there another person well uh, we oh are professor from yeah, yeah. Uh, at this moment um, we have uh, two minutes left is that right yes just two minutes uh, I would like to uh, command and uh, comment on something that uh, both of you, either you know, whoever would like to comment on and what I would like to say. Um, so, you, how do you how do you feel about someone from going to school four years, five years, you know, just just breaking their bags to become to learn techniques and become good audience? Right, at least in theory, right? mm -hmm. and then they go out to the real world, right? And then they have to spend the rest of their life working as a clerk or as a waitress, you know. And then all this, the time that they spend to go towards, you know, their career, you know, it, it feels sort of like it became a, a, a hobby as opposed to the real career, you know, the money making. Career. Well, I, I often cynically say I'm a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. I'm not an artist, I'm a hobbyist. Because mm -hmm. I don't sell the stuff. I mean, once in a while I'll sell stuff. But, you know, it's like, I'm not, you know, I would love to be on the career track, but the fact is, you know, I'm not cap either capable or willing to do the things that you need to do. I mean, I, I've sort of tried. You know, I can't say I haven't tried. But, um, For me, I don't think, um, well, to get back to your other question, I, I have friends, you know, who've worked all their life and that are not as fortunate as I. I mean, I got a job here at Union County College, and so I've had a fairly comfortable life, at least more recently, if my salary's going up. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but in the beginning it was rough, you know, when I was you know, first hired here, but uh, you know, a lot of my friends, I mean, one has worked, you know, part-time in a daycare center with his wife all his life. Another did part-time advertising all his life um, and took whatever job they could to be able to be, have some kind of personal purity about their art, you know. And I think I would tell any student, you know, is that's what, that's what you're after. The financial success is not the real success. The real success is the personal success. And to be able to tell yourself, I had this vision and I carried this vision out, you know, I think that's what's really important. I mean, if I look back at, say, some of my teachers, uh, well, I was always humorous in graduate school. I always remember the teachers had galleries in New York, and I was oh, they're really, you know. Well, others, I didn't, but some of the other students said, oh, they're really successful, you know. They've got this New York gallery that's showing their work, and they've got it made, you know. It's like we're on the painting track with them, you know. And um, the fact was they did, but... I don't really think that they were selling anything in the gallery. <laughs> you know, I have friends today who are you know, semi-famous, and they sell nothing. You know, and everybody thinks they're famous, and the money's rolling in, and it's not true, you know. Now, there are people who make tons of money, you know. Uh, but they are very few people, and like I could say, I think they're the ones who have either a high dose of personal charisma, they have a great deal of drive, and they're very good business people, you know. Um, now, this one teacher I had, you know, who had a more personal orientation to drawing, who was one of my mentors, I guess, and actually, he would have been 90 this March, and his wife and his gallery up in... Maine is doing a show of all his favorite pupils, so I'm going to be in the show in Maine in Portland, which is really, I'm really excited about in May, because I adored the guy, I thought he was just, I just learned so much from him, but, you know, he didn't have a gallery show in New York till he was like 
85. And he died the week before it opened. Oh. <laughs> is that is that the cruelty of fate or what? You know. But he had it all set up and he knew he was going to have it. So he died in peace, I guess. <laughs> so, um, but I think what I'm telling you is sort of what he conveyed to us, that it's a personal journey and any financial success you get out of it is just frosting on the cake. You know, it's, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, I think that's the way you have, you really need to look at it. You have to have a, you know, if you're going to be an artist, I say you need a second plan. Like, I have a plan to be a teacher. You know, plan D. You know, don't count on the artist plan. It's like your, I hate to say, it's like your parents say. I've got a comment on that in a minute. (laughs) Um, But, you know, you do have plan D. You know, it's like, and even if you don't have plan B, you're going to be forced to develop a plan B just to survive. Either that or you'll be off the planet, you know. So it's like, you'll figure something out. I mean, you may not live lifestyles of the rich and famous, but, you know, people somehow manage to survive. I mean, I wonder how some of my friends have survived. And they, you know, they, they survived. <laughs> you know, you have to. You have no choice. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I would like to hear a little bit of, of your thoughts on this. Like, how does that make you feel when you're looking at it from the food inside of it? Yeah. You know, this is, this is we're talking about your your future, future, our future, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I think about uh, like friends that have graduated and they're now like all looking for a job. They're all artists, illustrators, whatever, and and I'm trying to follow in that path, but I kind of see like personally. I, my my plan B is like, all right, well, at least I can try to do psychology and then at least try to push the psychology aspect and then do art and mix those two together to do art therapy. But, like, people who just, they put years and years and hours and so much of their life into their art and then they go out into the real world and it's, like, seven million other people just like them that are, like pushing to the front of the line to go get that job and you really it's just you gotta sell yourself you gotta show everybody why you think your art is better than theirs like like well my art has all this image in it and all these messages and your art is just like a blank wall obviously mine is better and you try to sell yourself in a way I guess to people who are hiring to like to have them believe you, to convince them, because you believe yourself. So you definitely, <coughs> like Professor Hildry said, have to have that plan B, because you may just not get to the front line before everybody else, and then you're stuck, and you're like, well, Applebee's is around the corner, so I guess I'm going to have to apply there. <laughs> I think that no matter what you do, no matter what plan B you do, as an artist, you'll always be doing art no matter what. So you'll always be, at, like, you'll come home from your waitressing job and you'll be doing art, or you're always thinking about the beauty of the, the way that art is out in the real world. Everything looks artistic, and eventually, I think, you will be in, like, the right place at the right time, and somebody will see what you're capable of. Maybe even an Applebee's. So we like, you can design our logo. Or, you know, <laughs> something along that that line. If you're dedicated, I think you... And you don't, like, put the, the secondary first. You might, you might make it. 